everybody. Thank you very much for coming to my session. So, let's see if this is working. What you're about to see is a work in progress. It's a live storytelling collaboration with AI. The story is about Ada Lovelace and Charles Babbage, and Ada's vision that one day a machine could be used to create art. I'll be inputting prompts that will guide the AI in generating images, and I'll be using voice cloning technology and a camera monitoring my actions in order to bring the characters to life. So, here we go. Can we have more audio, please? Imagination is the discovery faculty. These are the words of Countess Ada Lovelace, mathematician, aristocrat, mother, and visionary. Welcome to London. It is Wednesday, June 5th, 1833. That's Ada. She is 17 years old and on her way to a party at Dorset House, located in one of the better parts of the metropolis. As a countess, she had met many of the celebrities of the day, but tonight she would meet a man who shared her love of science. For this is the home of Charles Babbage. Babbage was 42 when he met Ada, a scientist obsessed with numbers. He was the author of a book about the calculation of insurance premiums and another about the decline of science. And now he had a new project, a calculating machine. My dear Countess, I'm glad you appreciate the value of such a machine. And yet, I seem to live in a country that is incapable of estimating it. That is true. We overrate what we find remarkable and underrate those notions that will surpass what we praise. Babbage shared his plans for the difference engine and Ada immediately saw its possibilities. Others did not. I liked Mr. Babbage immensely. He saw mathematics in everything. And so did I. In 1833, Victoria became Queen of England and Charles Babbage devised a new calculating machine. It used punch cards to guide its computations. It was a mechanical marvel of cogs and wheels, a machine for processing numbers way beyond anything that had been attempted before. Not many people understood the concept. One fellow asked me to explain the principle of the machine in two words. And what, and were, what they? were they? The method of differences. That's four words. I can see why people were confused. Babbage's life was a turbulent mix of hope and failure. He failed to sell his machine to industry and government. He had always despaired about the lack of scientific progress. Now he despaired about his inability to convince the world that they needed his analytical engine. In 1843, a new opportunity came to publicize the analytical engine. The Italian mathematician Luigi Federico Menebrea had written a paper about Babbage's machine. Countess Lovelace translated my paper into English because she believed it would draw attention to the engine in England. She expounded on the professor's ideas and suggested that such an instrument could do more than calculate numbers. It could be not just a scientific tool, but a creative one. It was no mere calculating machine. Imagine an engine that create art or music, compose elaborate concertos, sonatas, arias of any degree or complexity. The possibilities are endless. Ada wrote what many consider to be the first computer algorithm. And in doing so, she became the world's first computer programmer. Mathematics is the unseen relationship between things. To see them, we need our imagination. It is poetical science. The analytical engine weaves algebraical patterns, just as the jacquard loom weaves flowers and leaves. For some time, Ada had been in ill health. 
Laudanum was her medication. Her correspondence and mathematics is filled with metaphor, philosophy, and grand dreamlike visions. Imagination, she said, is the key to discovery. Those who've learned to walk on the threshold of the unknown worlds may then, with their fair white wings of imagination, hope to soar further into the unexplored amidst which we live. I am more than ever now the bride of science. Ada made Babbage a proposal to fund the building of the analytical engine. But Babbage, with the same stubbornness he had exhibited throughout his life, refused her offer. The analytical engine was never completed. Ada Lovelace died in 1852, age 37. But her optimism could not be crushed. She truly believed her ideas would live on. That brain of mine is something more than merely mortal, as time will show. Ada Lovelace brought her imagination to bear upon the mechanical. And there are other sub problems. She saw a machine that could change the world. That world is now here. A world where science and art melt, where human imagination combined with technology gives us the means and the power to transform everything around us. Thank you, Ada, for the foresight that many lacked and the vision you shared. You truly are the enchantress of numbers. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> so that already concludes the curated part of my session. We have a few minutes, so if any of you guys have questions, suggestions, comments, um, please go ahead. And do we have microphones, or is there a mechanism to do so? If not, just raise your hand, and I'll repeat your question. Maybe move this out of the way, so we see how things work. Yes? Okay, so what tools do I use to generate the video? So I use a, an open source tool. It's called ComviUI. It's a, a mechanism where you can create these kind of networks of, uh, of image processing. I'm using uh, an LLM to generate these prompts, which you're actually seeing on the screen right now. So there is a prompt list. And there's a, little, a few hooks into, into Comfy UI, which then trigger these prompts as I go through the story. And um, there's also a, a voice changer included in the tool, which I managed to break just before the conference. So I pre-recorded some of these voices. This is me talking, uh, unfortunately, today in a pre-recorded fashion, uh, doing the voice cloning. I'm using Stable Diffusion as a model. I think it's uh, Stable F Diffusion Turbo, which enables me to generate about three or four frames a second. And then once in a while, I, I shoot off um, um, an, an individual image from my webcam, where I, I use a little bit of segmentation to cut out the background, which is an iPhone app, which I'm running. Um, I'm shooting off an image to do, um, to do kind of a video injection. So it processes a very short video clip and then sends that back to the, to the timeline. So sometimes I do things which are not part of the story because I'm kind of pre-making the images, which then later on will be used in the story. So there's a kind of a quick explanation. Maybe one other thing to add to this, I'm purposely running this local on a laptop. The idea is that this is mostly open source software, which anybody has access to and can experiment with and should not use a supercomputer or a cloud service to, to do so. Thanks for the question. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes? Oh, Charlie? Yes? So I used the kind of off-the-shelf models to uh, to create this, I, um, I, I'm kind of a novice, like I think a lot of people in, in using these tools. And this is also what's so fascinating about these tools. They're like the, 
getting into this kind of stuff is really not super hard. You know, like if you push at it, you can make some really beautiful new things. So everything is quite custom. I did do the, the changes to Comfy UI in order to send and receive OSC open sound control messages and kind of remote control all the aspects of the, of the, of the system in that way. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes? Outside of storytelling. So where would I see this application, these kind of applications going outside of storytelling? So I think there's con some obvious uh, um, contenders, right, for content production, for you know, automated newsreels, or all sorts of uh, generative video models, which I think we see emerge in the markets now, and there's a lot of conversations about what, who will they replace or what are they good for. Um, I think the kind of, and to move away from your question just a little bit, like uh, one of the reasons I do this is kind of to show that there might be other things we could do ex besides the usual suspects, and that it's a little bit up to communities like this one here to to decide that, to decide that trajectory of these kind of technologies. So at the moment, everything is kind of open, uh, literally open source and super democratized. So um, we can dream up whatever we like, which this could be useful for. I think maybe one thing I, I was thinking about quite a bit when I was doing this is like ed tech. Like how would that be in a, in a school environment for role playing or, you know, like doing, uh, creating characters on the fly for a teacher, for, for a whole class interacting with each other. This could be a super interesting thing in a classroom if it can be simplified. Right now it's a little bit of a Franken monster of tools being connected together, but this could be also a very elegant thing for a classroom. Yes? I can I run it again? <laughs> you missed the presentation. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I think we're we're almost out of time. We have about two minutes left, I think, in the in the presentation. But uh, I hope there's going to be a video which uh, which shows all of this online. But thank you very much for coming to the session. Do you have a, a last question, maybe? Somebody? Yes. Yes, please. Yeah, that's super interesting question. Like, could this work in a fully immersive world? And I know there are some companies and individuals working on creating these like 3D HDR spheres. There's uh, companies work, many companies working on, on on generating 3D models on the fly, and also textures and surface materials and so on. So I think it's it's a matter. Of for somebody to bring this all together, right? And uh, I think the characters, maybe the way I do it right now, I use segmentation to cut myself or out of the, of the environment on stage. So I would imagine you could insert real life characters which are changed on the fly, like, like billboards, like video billboards within these virtual worlds. But that would be a super interesting thing to, uh, to even collaborate on as a next step. Like, how is that if that runs in a headset or in an immersive environment of any kind? Thank you for the question. So I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up here. I wanted to say thank you to all of you who uh, sacrificed your lunch break or part of it to come here. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs>